Hey YouTubers, today I'm working on my 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited 5.7 liter, so the Hemi. And I'm going to be replacing the radiator because I have a small leak. And I'll show you where those leaks can occur at. I'm also going to be replacing the upper hose, the lower hose, probably the cap because I did order one. And uh, I did get a temperature temp sensor, but that was only because I didn't know if it was in the radiator, screws in the radiator or not. So if not, I'm not going to worry about it. It was only like 13 bucks. But to start, what you do is uh, take off the cover if you have it, which is just the oil cap holds it on. Pull that off. Then with a screwdriver, undo the these clamps here, the two on this rubber one that holds this guy in that opens up the space so you can see the upper radiator hose here and because I'm doing this I figure I'd replace the hoses too and I will show you the new unit so here we have I got in the lower hose I'm still waiting on the upper one some of the other stuff I also got the fluids in um, the Jeep parts, like the, the hoses and stuff I got from Rock Auto, or through Rock Auto, I should say. And anyways, here's the radiator. And I believe there's a tag on one side of the box here. Just show you the tag. This is what I got. I got the Spectra Premium. I believe it was like 120, 125, something like that. Uh, AutoZone, it was just over $200 for this same radiator uh, Pet Boys was like 280 for the same radiator so Rock Auto was definitely cheaper their shipping's a little on the high side but even with the higher shipping you know it's still cheaper and it came really quick so pretty much this is how it comes they actually have some lots of green bubble stuff that's in here it has like a little you know flush it so what you do is, from my understanding, just from looking at the directions, is I'm going to pour distilled water through this. And that will pretty much flush it out, make sure there's no uh, foreign particles or anything. I don't know if they put any type of chemical in there to keep the radiator, but I'll just go ahead and flush it before I actually fill it. And follow the directions on that because it says right here. Zoom in. Void warranty if not flushed and filled with antifreeze coolant, coolant and distilled water. So here's the part number again. So pretty straightforward, and I will say it came from Rock Auto really quick. I was actually surprised because it could have been today's Thursday. It could have been up till Monday it said but they're usually pretty quick on the shipping and they are and the other two parts or there are a few parts the hose and stuff should be on their way one through postal service and one through DHL both tend to come later before I forget the uh, to take this off that's where I I'm at right now you just have to undo these plastic Guys that are in there, you just pry up, pull them out. It can be a little tough. I do have one slightly mangled one, but I think it'll still work to reinstall it. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I was just going to see how the rest of this comes off. And possibly Right there is a, looks like a 10 mil. And I'm going to say that's it. So, so I'm back, took the grill out. Actually didn't have to undo that. It just rotates back and it comes right, right out. Pretty simple. So the, really the only part that's holding it in good are those plastic tabs on the top here. So the next piece looks like I will take this hose off or gasket off or the hood and then this cross member looks like I'll pull that out to get easy access here 
but so far pretty straightforward not a big deal I would say those are 10 mil also and I already started undoing that if you saw that in the videos I can flash by that's the transmission cooler a lot of different coolers here so we'll see exactly what I need totally take off all it looks like those and that's braced into there so I'll undo those guys yeah, they don't go through the other side. So, okay, be back. So, hey guys. So I got this bar pretty much off. Just want to kind of point things out. The nuts here are 13 millimeter. Takes off the hood latch. Then you can kind of move it to move these out to hopefully not need to totally take those off because they are kind of under there. I don't really want to mess with them. And the thing I didn't notice was the washer fluid reservoir is aluminum riveted on. So I used a quarter inch drill bit to drill that out and pop it off. So then we just remove the crossbar for the radiator. Set that down there. And we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Kind of like stops dirt and bugs, I guess. Where I think it's leaking is up in the seal between the plastic reservoir and the actual metal of the radiator. As you can see, it's crimped on. I guess that's very common. So, I mean, we got a fan here. You got, oh, I guess this is how the air intake comes in. Didn't realize that. Wonder if I can slide that piece off and out of the way. So, anyways, I'll come back in probably another minute. Okay, next step, guys. Do a uh, two bolts here, which were 10 mil. Two bolts over here, uh, 10 mil. So that's all undone. Also down there, which you can get through down by the tow hook, right there, and right there. So my next thing is I'm going to go ahead and pop the lower hose and let the coolant come out, and then uh, see what more I have to uh, work with here do to pull out the radiator. Note this is the fan shroud, so I'm going to have to unscrew that, which I think there's one back here and one up here. <sighs> Probably one lower too. Yeah, I think one mid midway down. And, and this is where it's been leaking. It's a little wet. The car gets warm up the temp. It's been leaking down here. I'm going down and then dribbles out so it is what it is modern cars instead of doing this out of metal where it would never leak <laughs> yeah they do it out of plastic so, okay onward well guys i went ahead and popped the lower hose have a bucket under there so it's draining, I undid the overflow tank. And what else? I took the rubber trim piece off here. Be careful, I broke off one plastic tab when I pulled. You'll actually want to use a screwdriver and push on the remaining three or four if you do it from the get-go. Try not to break those. They do transfer over to the Spectra. What I'm talking about is this, this trim piece. So it just kind of makes it neat under there oh, yeah so I'm gonna probably do this upper hose as soon as I it stops uh, dripping on the lower one yep so these just showed up while I was doing this so see love uh, tracking nowadays so here's my upper hose okay I just cram it into the box
think it, yeah, something like that. This one's a Continental Elite. Hmm. Looks like one of those. And then I also got the cap, radiator cap. Because I figured, well, what the heck. And also the temp sensor. But I see that it's actually in the block, which I guess, should, guess makes sense. It looks like I can get to later on. And I don't have an issue with that, so... It was like 13 bucks, so I'll just leave it. I think with shipping, probably like 16 bucks. It's so not much. Won't worry about it. Do the main thing here, the radiator. Get the new hoses on, get the, uh, the old radiator out, and the new one put in. Might notice something missing now. Went ahead and pulled the reservoir tank to 8 mil that holds it in over here. Just a tab slot here when you slide it out and up and yeah that's pretty much it for that and this plastic thing holds this side in just pushes on just leave it there for now and i took out the air box which was a i want to say 10 mil and that's why i ended up taking that out because i could see that was going to be a pain in the butt to just i unscrewed it but to get back in there put it back in i'd be fighting it all day Seeing as that's barely hold up, hold on, just take it out. And this piece for the, the air intake, the plastic piece that was there, which looks like this guy, you just pull on it and it will come out. There's like a little tab it's in. So just kind of wiggle and pull and it come out and then you can just yank that straight up because the rubber grommet down there holds it in kind of like a pin. So you just yank really hard. That's what it looks like. You kind of see what is going on. So next thing what I was doing was making sure fluids out of here best as possible. So when I undo it, I don't like drip too much on the floor, which is one of these clamps. And I have one of I have this a vice grip that works really nice. Probably have to open it a little on this one because that one's wide and then these have been on since day one probably have never been undone so you'll want to probably work it back and forth break it from the hose and then if you can come this way but on this one you have a long neck you could go that way too and just pull that off this one was easy i was able to undo it and slide it this way and pulled it right off the radiator so hey guys I'm back I think you're actually supposed to do undo the AC and probably the um, power steering but as you can see I'm working it slowly out the radiator that is and I'm only really I'm only hung up there's a spot here due to the lines so trying to be careful but there's a tab down there that this guy can rest on. And you can see where I got it. It keeps getting hung up in that area. So I'm actually heating up my plastic welder. And I'm going to melt that tab off to pull this out. Now for the new one, what I did was I went ahead and dremeled. As you can see the dremel up. I went and dremeled the tabs off on the bottom because honestly you don't need it to have that big one sitting on it because it's bolted it's bolted on you know so having tabs down there is kind of redundant I'm sure that's something to do in the factory to have it all resting on each other you know while they're hooking things up but I don't think it's really needed so to make it easy sliding the new one in I just pre cut them right off and here they are you know this is the tab it just sticks out like that so just enough that you cannot slide the old radiator out of course it would probably be easier if you just disconnected everything but man that's really of a pain so I, I almost have it out it's just getting hung up down there so Hey guys, um, ta-da, it's all done, magically. 
Now, actually, I totally failed at doing the radiator replacement. And guess what? I had to uh, take it to the mechanic. Because once you get down in here, to pull that out, you have to pull out everything. You, know, you have to pull out all the coolers, the transmission, cooler, oil cooler, or maybe the front one's a power steering, and then the radiator, the fan. I'm not quite sure how they pull all this out. And, well, um, I'm, I was more than happy to pay the $300 for them to put it in. I just went to a local mechanic. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. I'll do the hoses easy, lower hose. You can do the hoses all day, every day. But to actually replace that radiator is just a pain. So everything's in now, running great, no leaks. So perfect. But this video is mainly so you can see at least how to get down in there if you want to attempt it yourself. Or even if you're just replacing some hoses and want to know how to get some connectors off. Or you can just watch me totally fail at this. Uh, oh well, sometimes you win, you win some, sometimes you lose. And I lost on this one. Oh well, 300 bucks. Not, not a huge deal with the radiator and the hoses, 200 so 500 bucks. got it replaced. So guys, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my other videos.